Are you wondering about Whitefish, Montana? In this video, we'll give you a full tour of the town, show you everything there is to do around here, and stick around to the end, and we'll give you a tour and prices of the different homes in the different neighborhoods around Whitefish. So welcome to Whitefish. We'll start in the downtown area, and as you can see here, this is the new city hall. It was just built a couple years ago, and on the back side of it, there's a big parking garage that has helped with parking around town. So now we'll start on Central Avenue, and this is the south end of Central Avenue, and the buildings down at this end are fairly new. This is the newer developed area of the Central Avenue, and what you'll notice about Whitefish and Central Avenue here is that none of the chain stores, the national chain stores are allowed. So all these businesses here on Central are locally owned, local businesses that you're only going to find here in Whitefish, which is kind of nice. Uh, they don't allow any of the, you know, national stores. So if you're looking for one of those, you're in the wrong spot. On this block, there's a lot of uh, gift shops, uh, clothing stores and then our office is right up here on the left and this is the main intersection right here of Central Avenue and Highway 93 and then the next block is more of the restaurants and bars you'll see the Bulldog the Remington uh, there's a great coffee shop here on the left called Montana Coffee Traders and then on the right is Casey's and they actually filmed an episode of the Bachelor there a few years ago and this empty lot to the left, it was just approved. They're going to put a boutique hotel right there. And on the right, you have the Great Northern Bar and Craggy Range. And this is the old brewery here on the left, this big building. They're in the process of remodeling that right now. Um, and then looking forward, you can see right up to the ski resort. And then we have a park here called Depot Park. And this is where they have the farmer's market every week. Um, great open area. There's picnic tables. You can hang out there during during the summer if you want. And then we're coming up on the Whitefish Library, which is on the back side of the middle school that's to the right, but we'll show you that in a little bit. Uh, but the library has been there for a long time, and it's a great place if you want a quiet area or you want to use the internet and you didn't bring your computer. And then right across from the park is the actual train station. It was built in 1928, and the Amtrak comes through here. So if you're headed to Seattle or if you're headed east to Minneapolis or Chicago, you can get on the train right here at the Whitefish Depot. So as you can see, it's a historic building, and I would go inside if you're walking around downtown. It's a cool place to see here in Whitefish. So now I'll take you out to the two state parks we have here right around town. This is The first one is called Les Mason State Park, and it's located down Whitefish Lake a ways, so it's out of town about four miles. Uh, and it's just a day-use park. It's got a great beach. There's a swimming area that's all roped off, and they have a little dock out there, or a swimming dock, and kind of a nice place to get away from the crowds in town during the summer. And then you have the Whitefish Lake State Park that is over kind of behind the golf course. It's on the west side of town, uh, also located on the lake. And if you're looking to camp, you can camp at this park. So they have 25 sites here. Some of them are for tents only. Some of them are for RVs. And they do have a trailer limit of 40 feet in length if you have a bigger RV. And the other good thing about this park is it sits right on the lake. So if you're looking to go swim in the summer or boat or whatever you want to do, as you can see here, there's a great little spot uh, right on Whitefish Lake. Another awesome thing about Whitefish is they have the, it's called the Whitefish Trails. And there's trails all around town. And they're working on eventually connecting them all the way around Whitefish Lake. This is the Lion Mountain Trailhead. This is a pretty popular spot right here and there's a little loop on this particular trailhead that's three miles and a great overlook over uh, Skiles Lake and then this trailhead here is up towards Big Mountain it's aptly named the Big Mountain Trailhead and this connects all the trails that start down near Reservoir Road and then go up to the ski hill uh, on Big Mountain but like I said eventually 
all these trails are going to be connected. Right now, there's probably about 50 miles of trail. Uh, I'm sure once everything's connected, it'll be closer to 100. So now we're on the east side of town, and as you can see right there, that's the Whitefish Airport. Uh, it's just a grass runway. It's not controlled, so if you have a small plane, you can fly in there. But this is the dog park, and this is a great spot. They have uh, two separate areas, one for big dogs, one for small dogs, and it's a big park, and a lot of people use this, and uh, another great benefit of living here in Whitefish. And as you go down, you can actually see they have a pond in one of these areas for the dogs to play in. And then as, as we get a little further down here, you will see a few years ago, they also built a skateboard park that's all in the same complex. And this is kind of right off of Second Street and Armory Road if you're looking for it on a map. So now we'll look at some of the lodging here in Whitefish. This There's two big lodges. This is the Whitefish Lake Lodge, and it obviously sits right on the lake. And they got a great pool there and little bar out by the lake. They have a big dock and a marina. So if you're on the lake, you can pull up there and get gas and whatnot. And they rent boats. And then the other one is called Grouse Mountain Lodge. And this is over near the golf course. So it's on the west side of town. And it sits, the lodge actually sits right along the 18th hole on the south course of Whitefish Lake Golf Course. And this lodge is managed by Glacier Park Inc., which runs a lot of the lodges up around Glacier Park. Um, but it's a very nice lodge. And there's many other hotels in town. These are just the two biggest ones, and I thought I would show them to you. So now we'll take a look at the schools here in Whitefish. Here on the left is you have the Children's House Montessori School, and that takes care of kids from two to six years old. It has programs for, and then right across the street is the Whitefish Christian Academy, and that goes from kindergarten through eighth grade, and that school has been around for a long time. And you can check out the websites of either of these two schools. I'll leave them in the notes if you want more information on them. And then across the street to the north from both of those schools is the new Muldown Elementary. They just finished rebuilding this, and so it's brand new as of this year. And as you can see, it, it's <laughs> brand new, shiny elementary school. And that goes from kindergarten to fourth grade. And then that brings us to the Whitefish Middle School, which I showed you earlier is located right downtown. And that would be fifth grade to eighth grade. And at that point, they head over to the Whitefish High School, which is right behind the Muldown School and near the Montessori and all of that. Uh, the middle school is the only one that's downtown. The high school also went through a major remodel just a few years ago. So it is a very nice school right now as well. So let's take a look at the healthcare in Whitefish. Right here we have the Whitefish Hospital. Uh, it is owned by Logan Health, which owns the hospital in Kalispell, so they're both tied together. Kalispell is a big regional hospital, uh, but this is a good-sized hospital. They have a helipad here, and they also have an emergency room. And because they're tied in with the regional hospital in Kalispell, you would have access to those doctors here in Whitefish as well. So down here on the southeast side of town, right near the hospital, you'll find Smith Fields, which is a huge complex. They have all kinds of baseball fields, little league fields, uh, softball they play out there. Uh, they also have a bunch of soccer fields. Soccer's pretty big here in Whitefish, so on weekends you'll see all kinds of kids out there playing whatever sport it may be, and it's just a nice area down on this side of Whitefish. So let's start looking at the neighborhoods, and we'll start down in the same area right across from Smithfields, and this is the Lake subdivision. And this end right here is the north end, and these are some bigger lots. And the sales in this area over the past year have ranged from 950000 for a three-bedroom, three-bath, 2,600-square-foot house, uh, up to $1.4 million for a three-bedroom, four-bath, 3,000-square-foot house on a half acre. And then on this end of the subdivision, the clubhouse is over here, and these are much smaller lots. And the prices in this part of the subdivision have ranged from five hundred and fifty-nine thousand for a three-bedroom, three-bath, two thousand square foot house on 0.15 of an acre, up to seven hundred and ninety thousand for a three-bedroom, three-bath, two thousand square foot house on the same size 0.15 acre lot. 
And right next to this part of the subdivision is another area called the Montera, which is a huge condo complex. They have a big clubhouse. There's a bunch of lakes and ponds and little trails around the uh, condo area and just uh, one of the nicer condo complexes in Whitefish. So the next neighborhood we want to look at is known as the Avenues and this is the area basically between downtown and the high school. It goes from Kalispell Avenue over to Pine Avenue and the homes in this area are very desirable because you're basically within walking distance to the schools and downtown uh, and the sales in here over the past year have ranged from 319000 for a two-bedroom, one-bath, 660-square-foot house on 0.14 of an acre, all the way up to 775000 for a three-bedroom, two-bath, 1,540-square-foot house on 0.1 of an acre. And if you like decorating your house, this area is known as Halloween Central around Whitefish. Everybody goes all out for Halloween here, and this is where everybody takes their kids trick-or-treating. It's kind of a cool thing to see if you're here during Halloween. And this is one of the newer neighborhoods in Whitefish. This is known as Creekwood, and this is located just south of the Montessori and Christian School that I showed you earlier. And the homes in here have sold for, in the past year, uh, 755000 for a three-bedroom, two-bath, 1,600-square-foot house on 0.23 of an acre, all the way up to $1,750,000 for a five-bedroom, four-bathroom house that was 6,000 square feet, and it was on one full acre. This subdivision would still be considered on the edge of town, uh, it's kind of open land after you get outside of here. And the houses in here are in very high demand. And usually, as soon as they go on the market, they sell rather quickly. So if you're looking for something in Creekwood, you got to be ready to jump uh, because these do go very fast in this neighborhood. So as we continue north in Whitefish, we go to the City Beach neighborhood. And the homes in this area, over the past year, we've had 14 sales and they ranged in price from 490000 for a three-bedroom, one-bath, 2,100-square-foot house on a quarter acre, all the way up to $1.3 million for a three-bedroom, four-bathroom condo that's right on the river. Uh, and the reason people like it over here is, as you'll see in a moment, you're right by City Beach, and it's a very popular area in the summer. And as you can see, you have a great view of the ski resort up there. And they also have this building over here that in the summer is open. It has a restaurant and ice cream shop. It's more of, you know, hot dogs and nothing fancy for food, but just a great spot. The other good thing about this area is all the trails that go around town, the walking and hiking trails, come. they will bring you right here to City Beach. And... The Whitefish River also comes out of Whitefish Lake just down probably about 400 yards from City Beach. And these trails, they all go along the river and there's bridges over the river as you can see. And it's just a, a great area and a great place to just walk around town, walk your dog or get some exercise. So now let's take a look at the two gated communities in Whitefish. This first one is called Grouse Mountain Estates and it's located above the Whitefish Golf Course, and there's only been one house that's sold in this neighborhood over the past year, and it sold for $2 million. It was a four-bedroom, seven-bathroom house uh, that was 7,100 square feet, and it was on 1.7 acres. But most of this area has great views back across the lake or to the surrounding mountains around Whitefish. So the next gated community is called Whitefish Hills, and it's located just to the west of town uh, near Blanchard Lake. And most of the lots in here are large. They're at least 10 acres. Some are 20 and even bigger. So the sales in here over the past year range from 1740000 for a three-bedroom, three-bath, 2,300-square-foot house on nine and a half acres, all the way up to $2 million for a two-bedroom, two-bath, 3,800 3, square foot house on 20 acres and that house was fully furnished and the great part of this subdivision is they have trails that go all the way around it 
And there's also a private access and boat launch over on Blanchard Lake. So as we start heading up towards the ski resort, we will come to the Iron Horse subdivision. And this subdivision is built around an 18-hole golf course that was designed by Tom Fazio. Just a great, great golf course. One of the top ones in all of Montana. And over the past year, there have been 13 houses that have sold an Iron Horse. And they range in price from $1,585,000 for a four-bedroom, six-bathroom, 4,200-square-foot house that was on three acres, uh, all the way up to... Six million eight hundred and seventy five thousand for a four bedroom five bathroom house that was sixty five hundred square feet and it was on one point eight acres and as we continue up towards the ski resort, we come to Termigan Village, and this complex is mainly a condo complex. There are some single family homes in here, uh, but it is a nice area, and one of the good things is you can use all these as nightly and weekly rentals. If you're looking for an investment type property and they just built a new down at the very bottom a new uh, pool indoor pool uh, locker rooms weight room complex that uh, all the homeowners can use here so ptarmigan is kind of a popular area as well mainly just because people like to use these as rentals and it's very close to the ski hill so for the people that want to be close to skiing and not have to go all the way into town this is a good spot so that brings us all the way up to the ski hill. And what I want to tell you about uh, the Big Mountain Resort is that there are subdivisions and condo complexes all over. To your left right there is Kandahar Lodge, which is a great place. Uh, and all these condos that you, you're seeing here as we're headed toward the main village area, they all have their own separate rules and uh, own amenities and some are really old and some are you know brand new so it's just to give you prices in here they're going to be kind of all over the board but as we pull up here we're pulling into the main part of the village and the big condo that you see to your left is known as Kintla the Kintla Lodge and then the newer one here that would be Morning Eagle and that's the newest one up here and there's a little store and one of our offices right there on the left before you get to Morning Eagle. And then on the right side of the road is the beer stube, which is the big hangout for a lot of people while they're skiing. And the last building here on the left is known as Ed and Mully's. And this area, just a little farther down to the right, is where they're building the new landmark project that we did a video about earlier. But as you drive around the resort, you'll come into all these different neighborhoods and as you get higher up, there's some spectacular views looking back over Whitefish Lake. The one thing I want to tell everybody is if you're going to buy something up here, no matter where it is, we've had a lot of trouble with national lenders because there's a whole bunch of HOAs up here. There's HOAs for all these little condo complexes and different parts of the mountain. And so <laughs> for the national lenders, they get very confused. So I would strongly suggest if you're thinking about buying anything up on Big Mountain and you're going to use financing to use someone local, whether it's Glacier Bank or uh, Whitefish Credit Union, or we can turn you on to uh, different lenders that do work around here that are used to it. But there's just so many HOAs up here. And for some reason, it, it sends the national lenders into a tailspin. And I've seen numerous deals fall apart because the, the national lenders couldn't wrap their head around what's going on here in Montana. And it seems to work fine for the local lenders. So again, use one of those and it should be a pretty smooth closing. The one other thing you should be aware of up here is most of the places are ski in and ski out where you can go right out your back door and end up on the slopes or end up at one of the chairlifts near the base lodge. Uh, this particular neighborhood is called Elk Highlands. They have their own chairlift that goes up over the hill that you can see on the left. And that'll obviously take you to the resort. But when you're looking at some of these other areas down near the village and some of these condo complexes, not all of them are ski in and ski out. So just be aware of that when you're looking to buy a place up at Big Mountain and just make sure you're, you're getting what you think you're getting. 
especially if you're looking at it this time of year and, and people aren't skiing and you can't see where anyone's going. Thank you for watching our video. Please call, text, or email for more information. And don't forget to watch our other videos about Montana.